Hello. In this video, we are going to derive two equations. The first, the Clapeyron equation, and secondly, the Clausius Clapeyron equation. First, we designate and define a new quantity, mu, which we call the chemical potential, and that is the derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of molecules of G present while keeping the pressure, temperature, and volume, and the number of other molecules constant. We also define the partial molar entropy, which is the derivative of the entropy S with respect to N, where N is the number of moles of some material, again, a constant pressure, temperature, and volume. Finally, we have the partial molar volume, V sub N, which is the derivative of the volume with respect to the number of moles of the material, a constant pressure and temperature. Notice that using the terminology for the two uh, terms to the right, we might just as well have referred to the chemical potential as the partial molar volume, which is true so long as we only have a pure substance, that is a substance with only one component. We recall the expression that we derived for the differential of the Gibbs energy dg, which is minus s dt, where s is the entropy, t is the temperature, plus v dp, v being the volume and p being the pressure. In the next step, we're simply going to take the derivative with respect to the number of moles of material d d n. This gives that d mu is equal to minus s sub m dt plus v sub m dp. Another way of imagining what we've done is to replace g, s, and v by their partial molar quantities. Now let us imagine that our substance undergoes a phase transition and that it undergoes a phase transition where both phases are in equilibrium. We can use a definition of equilibrium involving the chemical potential that the chemical potential of the first phase is equal to the chemical potential of the second phase at equilibrium. If mu sub 1 is equal to mu sub 2, likewise d mu 1 has to be equal to d mu 2. This suggests that we can use the expression we derived here to get a further insight into the condition of equilibrium during a phase transition. Now specifically for each of the phases, phase 1 and phase 2, we have that minus s sub m1, so this is the partial molar entropy for phase 1, dt, plus v sub m1, dp, where v sub m1 is the partial molar volume for the first phase, equals minus s m2, where this is the partial molar entropy for phase 2, dt, plus v sub m2, where this is the partial molar volume for the second phase, dp. Next, we're going to rearrange terms to collect them. So this gives us the, the quantity s sub m2 minus s sub m1, dt, is equal to the quantity v sub m2 minus v sub m1 times dp. So we've collected the molar partial molar entropies on one side and the partial molar volumes on the other side. Dividing si through each side by uh, v sub m2 minus v sub m1 and then by dt gives us that dp dt is equal to s sub m2 minus s sub m1 divided by v sub m2 minus v sub m1. So now we have a ratio of the differences of the entropy in the first phase and the second phase. And the denominator, we have the difference in the molar volumes between the first phase and the second phase. So that ends up giving us an enumerator delta S for the transition divided by delta V for the transition. And that's equal to the derivative dp dt. Now we recall that the change in the entropy 
the molar change in entropy during the transition is equal to the molar change in the uh, enthalpy during the transition divided by the temperature of the transition. And we're going to take this expression and substitute it for delta S of transition in our uh, equation here. So this gives us that dP dt is now equal to the change in the enthalpy of transition uh, for one mole divided by the transition temperature T times the change in the molar volumes during transition. Let us multiply each side by dt and integrate on the left hand side from P1 to P2 and on the right hand side from T1 to T2 where T1 and T2 are close together. The integral of the left-hand side, dp, between the limits of P1 and P2, becomes simply P2 minus P1. On the right-hand side, the change in the enthalpy uh, of transition divided by the change in volume of transition can be assumed to be nearly constant, so it can be pulled in front of the integral sign, so that simply now we have the integral from T1 to T2 of dt over t. This gives us on the right hand side uh, delta h of transition divided by delta v of transition times the natural log of t2 divided by t1. To simplify the right hand side even further, we can use a useful approximation for the natural log of t2 over t1. Let us assume that T1 and T2 are close together, so therefore uh, T2 divided by T1 is only slightly bigger than 1, and therefore the logarithm is only slightly bigger than 0. So we can approximate the natural log of T2 divided by T1 by T2 minus T1 divided by T1. And we're going to substitute this expression for the natural log in our Clapeyron equation up here. With that substitution, we get that P2 minus P1, the change in the pressure, is going to be equal to delta H of transition divided by T1 times uh, delta V of transition times the quantity T2 minus T1. And this is the first of our results, the Clapeyron equation. Now we look at a special case of the Clapeyron equation when we're talking about a phase transition from liquid to gas. Because a gas has a much greater volume than it did as a liquid, we can assume that the change in the volume of transition is almost exactly equal to the molar volume of the gas. Let's assume that the gas is ideal, in which case the partial molar volume would now be RT divided by P. From the ideal gas law, just for the volume, we'd have nRT over P, but since we're doing the molar volumes, we've divided through by an N on the right-hand side, so that's why this is now RT divided by P. Let us recall the relationship that we had determined for dP dt for the phase transition uh, a few steps earlier, where we had it as delta H of transition divided by the temperature T times delta V of transition. So this was the form we had before we integrated to get the Clapeyron equation. So now we're going to make use of this idea that delta V of transition is roughly equal to the partial molar volume, this RT over P. So now we're going to substitute RT over P for delta V of transition in this derivative expression. So we have applying our ideal gas assumption that dP dt is equal to P times uh, delta H of transition divided by RT squared. Our next step, as we did before, is to multiply each side by dt and then integrate. So being sure to divide each side by P as well, we get the left hand side is the integral from P1 to P2 of dp divided by p, and then on the right hand side we can pull the, uh, the change in the enthalpy of transition divided by r in front of the integral sign because it's going to be a constant. So then we have the integral from t1 to t2 of dt over t squared. 
The integral of 1 over p is simply the natural log of b. So between the limits of p1 and b2, we get the natural log of p2 divided by p1. The right-hand side is ever so slightly trickier because now we have the integral of 1 over t squared, and that is going to be minus 1 over t. And to handle the minus sign, we simply flip the t1 and t2, so that gives us 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. We already had the constant in front here that is not affected by the integration. So that gives us our final result, the clausius clapeyron equation. The natural log of P2 divided by P1 is equal to delta H of transition divided by R times the quantity 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.